Oh, we got our beautiful holding screen up. And we are live. Hello. Hello and welcome to Garblag Games, Mage 20th Anniversary Ascension Heist. Hello. I'm going to start this again. Welcome to Garblag Games, Mage 20th Anniversary Ascension Heist. I'm Ben and I'm going to be storytelling this adventure. And with me are my players. Here we have Claire D. Who are you and what are you doing? I'm playing Tiana, a dream speaker. And Alden? Alden? Uh, Alden? Hello, I am playing Ray Van Horn. Um, yeah. <laughs> Claire B. I am playing Sweet Pea, handle Chaos Angel, who's a virtual adept hacker. And David. Uh, hi, I'm uh, David, and I'm playing Jonathan Matheson Jr., um, a former uh, New World Order grey suit operative turned dream speaker. And this is Ascension Heist, and we will be running sort of a heist crew looking to steal the secrets of Ascension. So we're going to jump straight in. All of the information about Garblad Games and all of our other goodies will be down at the bottom at the end so you can click through to all of the various social medias join discords chat with this person that person and the other person buy cool stuff and all of that we're just going to jump straight into the game now <clears throat> so you've infiltrated the central london offices of your mark you're hanging from the ceiling you're typing frantically at computers everything's going wrong alarms are blaring klaxons are blazing what do you want to do? I'm going to try and access the system, the security system, try and turn the alarms off in some okay. way. Okay. Can you give me a, an intelligence and computers role to see if you can do that? I can. Uh, I'm rolling 6d10, yeah? Yep. Oh, didn't recognize it. Oh, nice roll. Oh, nice. Is it four successes. Um, you're frantic typing because we know that's how hacking really works. <laughs> hacking and Starts hacking. breaking down firewalls, but they're being built up as fast as you can break them. So the whoever is hacking against you is clearly an accomplished expert at this task. Computer security was much beefier than you'd been led to believe in the original brief. David, you think they're on to you? Uh, yes, so I've been uh, carefully um, explaining uh, an, an elaborate ruse to uh, whoever's um, uh, running this establishment um, where I've managed to get myself in um, under some kind of uh, deception. So um, I guess they're all sort of looking at me now as the alarms go in the background. Uh, and I'm like, so... A very large gentleman who looked like they probably once played rugby for a less than reputable organisation with short crew cuts. Listen to something in their headphones and start bearing down on you. Say, um, either of you two play, uh, fellas play football? <laughs> out in the traffic warden who's been eyeing you for the last sort of five or ten minutes oh, um, is mate. reaching inside his jacket for something that traffic wardens generally don't carry right uh, so I'm by the car uh, I guess hey can I hear the alarms Yes, yeah, everybody can hear the alarms. Everyone can hear the alarms. Right. The okay. whole building is blazing so, and wailing. The proverbial is hitting the fan, and some dodgy geezer is reaching for something he should not be reaching for. Ah. Uh, hmm. Is there anyone else around on the street? It's a fairly busy London street, so loads of passers by are stopping to see what's going on, having a look. Um, it's getting plenty of attention. There's a few people with their phones out, turning them around and starting to film the building, waiting for something interesting to happen. Right. 
but they do seem to be distracted away from this traffic warden rather than towards him. Right. Well, I will stroll up to him. Yeah. All right. Okay. It looks like he's trying to pull a gun. What do you want to do? Oh, I'm going to have to stop him. Okay. Let's have a Dex and Brawl roll to see if you can be so lock his hand up before we'll he can draw. How we do. Okay. So that would be seven. Yep. Um, one or none? Which one are we rolling? Oh dear, the one cancels the eight. The so one cancels no. the eight, so no. So there's no successes there. You reach for his arm as he starts to pull the gun out and you miss his arm. Claire D. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming I've seen um, Sweet Pea's efforts to try and get in and look increasingly frustrated. I will have a go myself. Well, you've already made your way in and are currently in the server room. Upstairs okay. in the building. Ah. Um, the fire suppression system in there seems to have come on and the doors are going into lockdown. Oh, good. <laughs> which side of the door would I want to be on and which side am I on? Well, you're on the wrong side of the door because you're on the inside and fire suppression systems in places like this tend to be the kind of gases that aren't very good for being alive. -ness. They suppress everything. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You don't want to spray your servers with loads of water, so they use some um, inert gases, which and are terrible for breathing. And the door is closing or closed? The door is closed, but it seems to be double locking. Let's make it not be closed. Okay. Assuming there's a panel or something. Yes. <clears throat> Let's talk to the panel. Intelligence and computers? Or literally talking to the panel? I think we'll go with intelligence and computers for now. <laughs> I might fall back on the other one. Oh, very nice. And also very unfortunate oh. at the same time. Oh, no. <laughs> Still two successes, though. So you um, managed to bypass the door and push your way through using the emergency get out. And you make your way out of the server room and into the stairwell. Progress. Now, leaving everybody there and flashing back to a week before, when first you met in a pub in the East End of London called The Little Driver. You've all received invitations to meet a Mr. Black at this location. The bar, when you walk into the pub, is directly opposite the front door. There's seating all along the front, um, range of different taps and bottles arranged behind the bar. Hint of a lingering old man pub smell to the place. That, that special mix of cigarette smoke and spilled beer that ingrained into carpets over 30, 40 years and still hasn't <laughs> gone away despite the fact that nobody's allowed to smoke in pubs anymore. So who's most likely to turn up first? I think I'm probably going to turn up first, be sat there with my headphones on, just checking things out. OK, there's a couple of students in the bar sat down having a pint talking loudly there's a couple of old men sat in the far corner um one sat on his own reading a paper two old guys trying to out cockney one another talking about mate geezer governor just total bullshitting one another almost non-stop apples and pears choked me monkey yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And at the bar, there is a, a gentleman in a suit, but no tie. He's wearing a black suit with a white shirt. He has a pair of plain black sunglasses tucked in the outside of his jacket. And he is sipping at a cup of clear tea. Well, I'm going to pop up to the bar next to him and ask the bar maid for an iced tea. And a uh, hey. A what, love? An iced tea? No, you don't have that here? No, sorry, love. Uh, soda? Not soda water. 
like or, orange flavored something oh, orange flavored oh yeah yeah we've got fanta is that all right that'd be fine yeah okay love here you go she she post mixes you a half pint of fanta some ice maybe oh yeah all right here you go drops a couple of ice cubes in it's 210 love uh thanks So, uh, Mr. Black, is it? He looks across at you. Indeed. You must be the American girl. Uh, Sweet Pea, yeah, nice to meet you. Well, thank you for coming on short notice. I mean, I know it's unusual for you to get invitations out of the blue like this. Well, not as unusual as you might think. If you don't mind, we'll wait for the others before I tell you. Yeah, what's going of course. On. Don't want to be re explaining yourself, do you? <laughs> Absolutely. All oh, repetition. Oh, it's tiresome. Yeah. All right, so one by one, the rest of you filter your way in. Yeah, Who's going to come in next? I saw Swan in, uh, looking a bit kind of uh, disorganized and, and uh, uh, out of sorts. Uh, while actually trying to keep quite careful attention to what's going on. Um, clock the bloke in the suit? Yeah. So I, I walk up to the bar, say, uh, uh, yeah, hi, can I um, have a pint of uh, Theakston uh, on his tab, please? <laughs> she looks across at the, the chap in the suit who nods, and she pours you a pint of Theakston. You go, love? Cheers, Pet. Who's next? I think at this point, now nah, you, know, you feel free to rule and say I can't do this. Um, so I have quite a lot of points in cloaking, in my little arcade ability to not be seen or not be observed. Yeah. I'd like to just step out of that. So I'm yeah. already there, but I just haven't been noticed. Yeah, I mean, it's the East End. You know all the pubs in the East End. Yeah. So, this place a little bit dodgy, not as dodgy as it used to be. No, not as much fun as it used to be. You know, it used to be a lot of old lags now. It was lively, it's not so yeah. lively now. Um, so basically, I will not exactly appear, but just come out of the background. Yeah, and oh, this is fairly solid chap, black leather jacket, wrap around black shows. Go, well, if he's paying, I'll have a whiskey. No, Jeez. just give me the bottle. It's all right. <laughs> Looks I'll at the guy in the seat again who nods and she's like come on love you know i can't do that oh come on you know you can all right then and she plunks the bottle down next to you thanks babe have one then, yourself as well oh cheers eyebrow kinks up on the guy at the bar <laughs> you're right mr black mr van horn this is not your normal manner. No, well, one steps out of one's comfort zone when one must. Well, it's good to step out of your bubble, you know, see a bit of the world. We find ourselves presented with an opportunity, but there's just one further young lady that I wish for you to meet before we begin. All right. Cheers. At which point, Claire? I shall saunter in carefully, um, deliberately. And um, ask the barmaid for a white wine spritzer. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Um, is that with lemonade or with soda? Just soda. Lemonade's far too sweet. Thank you. All right then. So she she pours you a bottle out of the fridge and post mix soda. <laughs> there you go, love. Thank you. Do you take contactless? Uh, don't worry, it's on my tab, apparently, says the gentleman at the, st at the bar in a black suit. Ah, Mr. Black, I presume. Nice to meet you. Please join me at a, a table. And he picks up his tea and wanders over to a table in the corner, furthest away from the two old geezers. Sits himself down. Well, thank you all for coming. It's an unusual, an unusual request, I know, 
but um, but let's get this out in the open up front. You're all particularly gifted and unique individuals with certain abilities that pose a useful addition to one another, shall we say. Uh, you may have heard of one another's work at various points, but I have an opportunity for you to work together. Are we talking uh, pub quiz team then? <laughs> I've got uh, I've got nineteenth century novels and uh, old old episodes of the Neighb of Neighbours. I'm not familiar with the vernacular, but yes, exactly that sort of thing. Um, how much do you know about Caton Holdings and investments? Uh, how much do we know? Almost nothing. Claire, do you want to make an intelligence and finance roll? Uh -huh. I haven't quite worked out my way around this character sheet yet. That's okay. Do, 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 do. It's early days. Where is finance? Oh, is it not on these character sheets? That'd oh, be just typical. I've got one. That'd be the no. story of me, wouldn't it? Is there a bureaucracy instead? Mm. Good Lord, where have they hidden it? There is, I'd have taken it, but I can't see one. Probably politics or investigation? I don't know. Yeah, let's make an investigation, since that's an appropriate one for you. Okay. There we go. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Oh. Caton Holdings and Investments are known of in the Awakened community. The owner, a gentleman by the name of Damien Kindler, is not Awakened himself, but is a mortal money lender and launderer for a large array of post-natural people and entities. Um, it's said that he um, finances underworld vampires some less than scrupulous mages um, but because he's a mortal institution everybody's always left him alone so that's what you know um, ha have I ever been involved in any raids on him uh, as a grey suit no, because he's immortal and he doesn't deal directly with the specials. So while you might have used him to track in the past the financial chain of where money's coming to and going from for reality deviants, you wouldn't necessarily have targeted him directly. Plus, he can be used. If he's dodgy, do I know anything about him? He's not your kind of dodgy geezer. Uh, wrong kind of dodgy. Not wrong kind of dodgy. <laughs> this is like oh. white collar, high finance dodgy. Oh, so. boring dodgy. So our, our two um, dream speakers <laughs> might have heard of him in their former roles, but um, you probably wouldn't have done. Suffice it to say, we believe that he is currently funding someone that we don't want funded. So we would like you to have a go at bringing him down a notch. Always happy to have a go. Yeah. From what I understand, he is expecting a huge investment to be coming in imminently. We're not sure of the source, but we know it's very, very bad. Our contacts on the other side have told us that there's a big sum coming directly into his business in about 72 hours, and we need you to go in and steal it. You want it intercepted? We can't have it intercepted because it needs to be taken in situ. If we could just have it intercepted, we've got teams of virtual adepts we can call in that could just hack our way through to the money. What we need is the money to actually enter the building so the bad people know that it's been deposited. And then we mm -hmm. need it to leave the building so you. they don't get their investment back. 
This does us a double favor of taking the money away from the bad people and ensuring that he can't take any more money from bad people because he'll be too busy running. This is a bank. An Are investment we... firm, yeah. And it's coming in as physical cash or is like there's going to be an electronic transfer? Yeah, is this a proper old school robbery or is this one of them new numbers ones? It's a numbers job rather than old school. Oh, good. Right. Far better. So you, want this, uh, you want this money hidden for a while or you want it to go somewhere else? We'd like it to go away. Okay. Do you mind where? Not particularly. Just asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> and you want it to look like he knew, yeah? Yes, absolutely. We want the money to vanish from his accounts and make it look like he knew exactly where it was going. So we need Damien's sure bank account. sticky digital fingers all over it. Quite. So ideally, we'd send it to some kind of private account of his. That would probably be best, yes. Burgers so account need... in Jersey, anyone? Oh. What about Panama? Hey, strikes me as a person that might actually have a bank account like that already. So yeah. do some digging, see what you can find on him first. That should be simple, yeah? Yeah. All right. Anything else we should know? You don't know where this money's coming from? If you find that out, that would be a helpful bonus. And feel free to take whatever cut you deem as necessary business expenses. Why, naturally? We don't want any of you to be out of pocket from this. Oh, no. Okay, so my next question is, uh, who's we? I represent the Sphinx Club. We're what's left of the apprentices from 20 years ago. The ones that grew up and actually learned a few things. You're all still fairly new in the business. Obviously, some of you have been around for longer than others. But when it comes to ascension, we still think it's out there. We're just don't know where to start looking. So we do little bits and pieces here and there. My instructions from the club were to assemble a team, point them at Kindler and see what could be done. When the club asks, I do, your names were the first out of the hat. Well, I'm both uh, flattered and uh, alarmed. Yes. Likewise. It's an interesting hat. Large hat. It is a very large hat. Sphinxes have quite large heads. <laughs> right, ben, uh, I'm I'm trying to read this guy. How uh, how upfront do I think he's being? Um... He's being guarded. Um, if you want to get more than that, make a roll. Like a perception, like a perception and subterfuge sounds perfect. Uh, right. That's six. I'm going to quietly call on Anansi's help as well. Yeah. Gross. Unfortunate. Hmm. It's still um, a success in there. Yeah, my subterfuge uh, specialization is fast talk, so not much use. Not, not on a subtle one, no. No. Um, he, yeah, he's guarded, but um, he appears to be genuine. Okay. If he's running a con, then he's running a very, very good con. Mm. Because he's coming across as quite sincere. Okay, he's, got yeah, a, but... he's got a little hermetic necklace. Seal of and, Solomon. Uh, yeah, I figured that. <clears throat> if we need a uh, kit, do you, um, do you have a line of credit or resources available to us? 
so that we don't have to go out on the street and this and potentially expose ourselves? It could be arranged, yes. Let me know what you need. Okay, which leads us to how do we contact you? He pulls a little phone out of his pocket. It's it's very basic, I'm afraid. Nothing special. Hands it over to you. Um, there's a number programmed in. Leave a message. I'll get back to you within the hour. All right. Rest of you got any questions? Not for now. Go go do some homework. I've um I've booked you a lock up. Reach around in his pocket, pulls out a key. There's a there's a lock up. I love that. <laughs> Stepney way. All right. If you uh, if you head down there. There should be a, a few bits and pieces already set up in there that you can use to get started. Is there a motor? You know, I like my motor. Come on, Mr. Will Mac. be by the time you get there. Good Do you have man. a preference? Ah, uh, ooh, something Chelsea tractorish. All right. This crew, centre of town. Yeah, I want something that can drive over other things. Speed's not going to help much. Range Rover? Brute force. Oh, yeah. Go on. It'll be there. Nice. Thank There's you, already Black. computers and some tools on site. If you need anything else, give me a call when you get there. Nice. Right, well. In the meantime, I wish you the best working together. And I'll no doubt hear from you soon. Yes, well, uh... Cheers. Good day to you, sir. Thank you. He pulls another envelope out of his pocket and sort of drops it on the table in front of you. Working expenses. It's got money in quite clearly. Okay. Puts on his sunglasses and walks out the pub. Well, um, hi, everyone. <laughs> hey there. Uh, why don't we all tell each other a little bit about ourselves? Go on then. Right, well, uh, my name is Jonathan Matheson Jr. Um, I knew I'd seen you somewhere before. Yeah, I was wondering. Hmm. Sorry, do go on. Um, is there a senior around? Just curious. Sorry? Is there a senior, Jonathan Matheson Senior? Well, yes, that was my father. Oh. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> oh, slight to check. <laughs> um, I, uh, uh, if you've heard the name at all, you might know I'm a, I'm a fence jumper. I came over from the New World Order. Um, currently, my, uh, uh, my service is to the Ghost World Society and the Dream Speakers. Um, I, I'm, I'm not from uh, the uh, aristocracy but i can i can move in those kinds of circles if maybe um if this fella's rich then uh, i can probably probably try uh, a bit of soft power ask some questions in um in in the right kind of schools and clubs that might help me get started um what about you or me yeah. I'm a local boy, Ray Van Horn. Pleased to meet you. What do you want to know? Run with the hollow ones. They're all a bit gloomy. I think it'll be all right. But, you know, we're all, <laughs> it's all going to dust, whatever happens. Ah, basically, I like driving. It's my thing. I like speed. I like motors. I like the thrill of just making it happen. So, you know, I'm known in the East End. People know they can trust me, get stuff done. Why Mr. Platt picked me? Ah, I'm a solid geezer. I think that's enough to say. Okay. And uh, the American lady? Ah, oh, sweet pea. I'm not from around here. 
Ah, oh, really? <laughs> I gather. I'm so, uh, what's, what's your game? Away. Uh, can you tell? Just tapping away at my, um, my Kindle with my earphones on, looking up at you occasionally. Oh, you're one of them. Oh, what's it called? What's it called? Millennials. That's it, isn't it? <laughs> if that's what you want to call me, I prefer sweet pea. Well, I prefer sweet pea as well. <laughs> so you're going to be our systems and uh, hacking? Uh, yeah, I mean, do you want to tell the whole pub while we're here? Uh, don't worry about them. I didn't hear nothing, did you, lads? One of them gives you a little wave over there. in the corner. Hello, Ron. I know where you live. <laughs> Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> right, and you, I imagine, are uh, going to be handling the finances side of things. I prefer to avoid as much of it as humanly possible on the other side of a computer screen, but yes, I can uh, generally make things appear and disappear as necessary partly why i left my last job <laughs> uh, there yeah, it was the, title. the organization uh, didn't suit my uh, attitude very well any longer so i left go to wheel society was a little bit more full of kindred spirits i feel so to speak <laughs> Right, well, perhaps we can uh, go do um, uh, information gathering and uh, reconvene. Should we go and see what's at the lockup? Maybe what we've got access to? Yeah, uh, I'm up for that. Yeah, uh, Ray, do you have some kind of. Uh, I, I came around the bus. Oh, mate. <laughs> ah, never mind. Uh, yeah, don't worry, mate, it's outside. Nothing flashy, you know. I want to make sure my wheels are still there when I come out of the pub. <laughs> I prefer taxi myself. I can guarantee the wheels that you came in aren't going to be the same ones you left on. Right, so you're going to head out to this lockup in Stepney then and see what's to be seen. See what is what, yes. It's only a short drive down the road, a um, little more than sort of 10 minutes really, and that's only because you can't go very fast or very far in London traffic. Hi. Well, this is true. <laughs> and there's a, a row of old garages behind a block of flats. Quite unassuming to look at. It looks like nobody's parked a car in them for years. There's grass growing in front of some of the doors. But there's one that's got a new lock fitted on one of the turning handles. Mm -hmm on the garage and when you slot the key in that he gave you that's the one that pops open very nice uh, i was before any keys went into any slots oh okay <laughs> so <laughs> then you all blow up out. and die yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd like to uh, peek through the veil please uh, uh -huh. spirit, spirit one uh just gonna look at look through the one that okay three successes Jolly good. It's um, it's not an easy thing to see through this close to central London when you're looking at it from a spiritualist perspective. But there are lots of little spirits around. They're, they're mostly sort of wormy spirits, unpleasant ones, primordial kinds of things. Um, it's quite a rundown area, so there's... Um, spite and greed and misery and gloom spirits more than happy flower fairies or anything like that <laughs> but they they appear to be avoiding the lockup quite successfully um so while they're sort of loitering on landings and stairwells and hanging off of balconies in the flats nearby a few of them are even sitting on the roof of the garage they seem to be staying clear of this door and the next two doors along from it i should say my focus for this um i'm sort of humming a nonsense little tune around and around again like changing a word each time and what would do a sound just right well there's something in there that's um that the spirits are avoiding 
That's reassuring. Maybe. <laughs> hmm. See? Is there something right. we should be avoiding as well? I can try going in. But to be fair, that is probably as big a risk as just opening the door. <laughs> you want to wait back a bit. I'll crack the door open, see what happens. Right, opening this door um, reveals quite literally the inside of a garage with a Range Rover parked in it. I let out an ear splitting scream. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? What? What? I, why? It's just a really nice motor. I just liked it. So yeah, there's a Range Rover parked He's inside. He's a happy screamer. Oh, good. <clears throat> Olive drab in colour. There's a little nice. pit underneath it so that you can get underneath it and like, tool around with the tinker bits and pieces. Uh, and there's a door in the back of that garage that leads through into the next garage. Yeah. Uh, wall's got a, a set of tools on a rack up on it. Looks like it's been set up by someone that's never actually used them or worked with the tools. It's arranged, you know, tool by size on a nice pin board at the back. Oh, one of them. Do they have little outlines painted on? They're not quite there, but it's okay. the sort of person that would have wanted to if they'd been given a bit more time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's shiny. All right. What's through door number two? Through door number two is the next garage, which has been sort of set up as a little workshop come office space. Um, it's pretty basic. There's some computers, two. Ooh, hello. There's a little worktop. <laughs> There's a, a very, very tiny kitchen space with a sink. Um, but the water is from a water cooler and there's a kettle and some tea bags and some long life milk sat on a tray next to it. And a final door leading through into the third garage that the spirits had been avoiding. And in there, there are a couple of bunk beds. Can I take a peek through the veil and see what's in here? Yep. If anything. How do I roll this one again? Um, you should just be able to click the dice next to your error tray. Yeah. Okay. Did that do anything? Nope. What's your method for looking? through the veil um probably focusing on um something basic on my phone like snake probably downloaded from a very very old website somewhere and hacked Where so it works the snake pretty much <laughs> <laughs> It's a fairly basic route, so we'll just let it. There we go. Okay. Um, looking Work. through the veil. No, not seeing anything. Sorry. <laughs> Never mind. Looking through the veil, um, you can see that this room is spiritless. There's there's nothing in here. There's no pattern spirits. There's no dynamic spirits. There's no primordial spirits. It's been cleaned. Basically, there are a few sigils that look faintly hermetic in origin, scratched into the ceiling that probably act to repel spirit presences from inside. So it's like a spirit clean room almost. Right. Hmm. Mm. Nice. I'm going to wander about the, the place, just kind of scanning everything, tapping into my computer, looking for kind of hidden bugs, cameras, that kind of thing, using my correspondence. Okay, so that's an Arete roll to filter space. Press 
Uh, zero successes. Great. <laughs> Well, do you want to make a mundane search for them as well? With yeah, um, why not with wits? Yes, um, wits and survival. And I suppose if you're doing it with technology, you could do it with wits and technology because you could have a bug search. Yeah, sure. To detect normal bugs. Three? Uh, no, many more than three. One, two, three, Wait. four, five. Oh, okay. Five successes. Um, you thoroughly scan this place for bugs, and there are none to the best of your ability to detect them. And you're pretty sure that you did a damn good check there. Cool. Seems pretty clean in here. Almost too clean. Yeah. It's sterile. I don't like it. Maybe he's used it before, I guess. Hmm. I mean, that's a good sign. Maybe he'll clean it after we've used it. Yeah, I guess. Suggest it needed cleaning. It's also worrying. Yeah. <laughs> I guess there's that. <laughs> Did I not mention the big rolls of polythene sheeting in the background? <laughs> <laughs> there are no polythene sheeting rolls. You're okay. Don't worry. The cleaners <laughs> will bring those with them. So there you go. You've got a little shed to work out of. It's not glamorous. It's lovely. I'm going to make some tea. It'll do. <laughs> Who wants tea? Oh, yes, please. Uh, oh. Do you mean iced tea? <laughs> uh, I can make you a cold tea. It's not the same. Is it peach? Come out, right? Do you have peach tea? Uh, no. Someone's going to have to go to the shop. Okay. <laughs> There's a Twinings on the Strand. You can get everything down there. Uh, yeah, we're in Stepney, but yeah, all right. I get around a bit. Why no sugar, thanks. All right. That's good because we haven't got no sugar. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to start making a shopping list and I'm going to make tea <laughs> you two what are good with the computers you do that alright and oh. you you with the connections maybe make some calls I'm going to make yeah well, let's, uh, let's get a start um, I'm just going to pull out a phone um, this, this game is set in 2020 right yeah yeah. I'll pull out a phone and um, look fella up uh, see if I can find what school he went to, who he's married to, and what school his, his wife went to. He is not married. Um, he is um, a bit of a playboy, as it turns out. A uh, bit of an eye for the ladies. Likes the ponies. Um, fancies himself as a racing enthusiast, but is is more of a sort of rubbish gambler. Um, doesn't really care all that much about well, whether or not very he posh so far. <laughs> He has pretensions of poshness from the looks of things. It looks like he's uh, he went to um, no university, didn't go. He's uh, dragged himself up by his bootstraps is the legend he likes to tell himself. It was connections. Daddy had connections. So he comes from money, but not old money. Um, I wasn't actually what... asking university though, I was talking, asking about like um, um, Eton, Winchester. Oh, I see. What, what? Um, he went to a local comprehensive. Oh, God. In North London. Okay. Yeah, local uh, comprehensive. Um, daddy was, well, not daddy, sorry. Daddy, he wouldn't have been a daddy. His dad was a self made man who um, wanted his kids to have a normal life, but at the same time would put in a good word for him here and there. So he cut his teeth working on the trading floors of a couple of different investment banks, jumping from one to the other, 
making a bit of money, managed a few hedges, set up his own holdings and investments company at the tender age of 32. And a few years later is now running Caton Holding and Investments out of their offices in Whitechapel. And appears to be doing quite a successful job. The business is very successful. There have been very few articles written about him. He, he seems to have been you know, ticking over. So where I says he's very successful, he's very successful and also mostly unknown. His um, reputationally, he's regarded as a bit common. So a lot of the um, more well-to-do investors won't put their money with him because he's crass and common. He likes to throw money around and is a bit nouveau riche when it comes to flashing the cash and showing off. Yeah. He's dated a string of um, actresses and models, never any of them for very long. And it's quite a private man. He's got a penthouse flat in Docklands. Okay. Owns shares in a couple of stables. <coughs> right. So, um, so the angles we've got here are got class envy mm -hmm. if one of us could uh, pull off being posh or being a journalist flattering him like a member of, uh, of high society we um, do either of those things if need be might have well he will have connections in the city so uh, you would definitely be able to help with that mm. um, might we can take a look at the London clubs, um, find the ones which allow you to buy your way in or have like slightly more relaxed standards about being referred in. Um, find out if he's already a member of any of them or if not, see if we can swing an invita invitation to a club that he's mm. previously been rejected from. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts? Uh, what are we going to do with this money? Like, what's the end game here? To be that honest, concerns me. To, to be honest, I'd dump it all in his personal uh, Panama account um, or wherever he's got an account for. And then we got to move it out of there, though, right? Because he'll still have it otherwise. I think the idea is to get him in trouble with his uh, his principles, but um... surely it'd be nice if he got in trouble and he didn't have the money. You're... That's my kind of uh, heist. <laughs> Your, your, your concern here is mostly, I guess, us having the money at the end of it. Well, us, so, you know, somewhere better than in his pocket. Yeah. Got a good charity in mind? There's plenty of good charities. That's I'm sure lot. we can find one. <laughs> I think as long as it's not him, it's all right. So what you want is you want little breadcrumbs going from where the money should be where the money shouldn't be, but with Damien's little sticky fingers all over it. Exactly. And then it disappears. And Damien's left going, oh, I don't know where it's gone. I'm really sorry, Governor. And now So we're Robin Hooding it. Believes him. Like it. I like it. I've got a hat for that. <laughs> right. Got a feather in. Yeah. Is it green? <laughs> oh, yeah. Goes with the Range Rover. You know, it's already Lincoln green. We're halfway there. Right, he doesn't have any wife or kids, so that's uh, one source of weak points. Mm -hmm. uh, and he likes betting on horses, you say? Yeah, I was wondering about that. Are you no. sure he's got no kids? If he's a bit of a player, he might have a few wild oats kicking around. No, no kids he cares about. Although, uh, mm -hmm. if you want to um, hack his finances and see if he's paying a little bit of alimony... Let's or... see what he cares about. Mm -hmm. I would like to hop on one of the computers and see if I can make it dance. Okie dokie, that's an intelligence in computers role. 
Actually, it's not intelligence, it's um, wits and computers. What am I saying? So what are you attempting to do? Um, essentially so not literally get around make, the... make it dance. <laughs> no, not literally make it dance. Um, I'd like to get onto whichever slice of the web will give me um, the access to essentially look at the back end of his bank account, whichever website I need to get into to acquire the correct algorithms to get in the back end of his Details. Okay, banking and financials are notoriously hard to get into, but using your channels and connections, what you can do is get a look at some reports and things and audits that have been done on Caton Holdings and investments. And the first thing that leaps out at you is how scrupulously clean they are. There aren't mistakes, and there should be. Every financial report that you've ever seen has always had, you know, minor clerical errors, little slip ups here and there. You've worked on cases before, even before you awakened yourself, where you'd have had to have a couple of weeks of chains of messages going backwards and forwards going, yeah, and now account for this, now account for this. Even, you know, £3.10 that's missing from a tiny amount of petty cash that should be accounted for but isn't. And this guy's accounts are airtight. They are mm. perfect down. He, he actually has a commendation from a financial regu regulation authority for how tidy his books are. And that in and of itself is a red flag to someone mm. like you. Recently whitewashed. Or continuously whitewashed. Mm. I'm suspicious of this guy. He's he's keeping his nose far too clean already. Yeah, can you um uh, can either either of our hackers get HR records? This dude's either got one PA that he's kept for ten years, who knows where absolutely everybody is buried, and is or there's one every couple of weeks, or there's one every few weeks. Yeah. Uh, who he generally gets uh, some kind of sexual harassment. Um, Wife. then pays them off and gets rid of them um we can use either of those i think the latter would be potentially more useful to us mm. let's take a look do you want to take a look sweet pea or shall i do it yeah i was gonna look for um i'll look yeah look at his network look at who's around him try and spot the pattern in um his people so you want to go through his social networks and you want to go through his business networks yeah Splendid. Okay, so if you could um, do wits and investigation, Claire P, and Claire D, if you could do another um, wits and investigation. Investigation or computer? Computer. Sorry. Make another one of the roll you haven't made yet. <laughs> <laughs> with some research i don't have any investigation yes, or... yes you can. Mm. right so <laughs> <laughs> slash roll forward slash yeah. roll. <laughs> Three, so claire four. going into hr records um he has had a series of pas um None of them have lasted longer than 18 months. Which and one was the penultimate one? Can I pull up any more of her details? Yes, you can. Okay. Recent enough that she'll still be hacked off about whatever it was, but um, not the current one who might still be uh, in bed figuratively or uh, literally. <laughs> <laughs> the, the previous... PA who left only three months ago was a lady by the name of Tracy Sarandon. Uh, her resume is quite good. She'd 
bounced around from a few financial firms, gradually making her way up the food chain from assistant to a team of traders, to assistant to head traders, to working as Damien Kindler's PA. She held the job for nine months Mm -hmm. and left after getting a better offer from elsewhere. So probably no bad feeling then. It's another way in though. I mean, we've got a pretty lady in a sundress, you know, looking for a job. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it. The offering, or <laughs> and, and also took a better deal uh, doesn't necessarily mean there wasn't bad blood behind it uh, behind her. Yeah, she might have been looking because she needed to leave. Bad blood. Yeah, very true. Uh, Claire P, your analysis of his social networks reveals that he's a fairly shallow bloke he doesn't have sort of deep and abiding friendships with very many people he loves to put up pictures of him on instagram and twitter and facebook of him rubbing shoulders with people who've got even the faintest hint of celebrity um makes a huge deal out of when he's met footballers in vip rooms at clubs is more than happy to shell out a bit of extra dosh to get into the vip rooms at clubs so that he can mingle with the pretty people and the media important people not important people but people who are sort of celebrity status he does love a little bit of celebrity status he's a fan boy of ego (laughs) And, and he definitely has a taste for um models okay in terms of his dating preferences do we know what he looks like? Is he uh, trying too hard or is he pleasant to look at? Or he's, he's slightly above average to look at. I mean, he clearly takes care of his appearance. Um, he's well groomed. He's got short, uh, dark brown hair that he keeps mostly slicked back. We're not talking 1920s yeah. slicked back, but we're, <laughs> we're talking he's got the sort of trader boy look down pat. He tends to wear a brown beige brown jacket with uh blue trousers uh his favorite shirt pattern appears to be checked he does love him a checked shirt all of his (laughs) pictures where he's been photographed doing something significant is always a checked shirt involved Um, he's not a big fan of ties he's very much a call me demo kind of guy up until you do something that he even vaguely doesn't like But socially, yeah, yachts, ponies, expensive clubs. He's got membership at a few gentlemen's clubs, but not gentlemen's clubs for gentlemen, more gentlemen's clubs for people who aren't gentlemen. Hmm. Uh, Peppermint elephant, places like that. Uh, New money then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Crass money. He uses money to make friends. So he can be bought. Well, he is a money launderer for bad people, so. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah? Whether we have enough money to buy him. What would we do with him if we did? (laughs) But that's Mr. Kindler. So in all this chaos and kind of in and out, are there any stable points? Oh, yes, like there is accountants. one. There is one particularly stable point throughout his friend from school. Um, mm-hmm. One of the kids he went to school with, um, a guy by the name of Ty Reed is his mate from school. They both went to the same comprehensive and where he went into finance, his mate, Ty, went into computers. Okay. Uh And this guy is is his head of IT and has been in every single business with him. He receives a disproportionately large salary for his job. Now, that could be to keep him. It could be because he does something more than just 
keeps the IT working in the business. And I'll uh, take a look into this guy's socially. HR records. They're, they're friends from school. Whenever they talk about them in any kind of reporting sense, they're always referred to as friends from school, but they're not actual friends. They don't appear to go places together or do stuff together. Hmm. Ty Reed seems to be quite a shy, withdrawn, doesn't like the spotlight kind of guy. And it's more of a sort of a hero worship thing. He's the guy that will sit there in the background and retweet anything that Damien says, but won't actually say anything himself. And you want to get into his financials as well, Claire? Um, his HR record and finances, if they're available, I'm assuming they'll be tied up tight or not true. Uh, that's going to be another intelligence and computers role. Let's see if you can get into there. Difficulty is eight on this one, though. Mm. Oh, I had to roll a one, didn't I? <laughs> That's still a very good role. Yes, his, his, his HR file and his financials are triple encrypted. They're mm. firewall protected. You actually navigate your way around a little worm program that's set to backtrace anyone that runs a check on him. Mm. It was not easy. Sweet Pea, you're doing the social network stuff. Mm -hmm. Can you find any daytime pictures of Ty Reed? Sure. I'll pull up a few. There are not that many daytime pictures of Ty Reed. He does not go out in the day very much. Hmm. Or very much. Well, he's very hard. Sorry, my cat's doing something. No, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ty Reed um, does not have very many photos, full stop. Uh, the photos of him that do exist. <laughs> I thought it was the cat. It wasn't the cat, it was the wife. <laughs> I was being assaulted by a cat. <laughs> um, looking for particularly is if we can draw a line in Tyree's history when suddenly he stopped be appearing anywhere in daytime at all. No. Mm. Um, not that easily. It looks like he's an indoorsy kind of guy, but not because he can only come out at night indoors, he kind of guy. More, he Why? doesn't like to go outside because there are people out there. <laughs> can we find out where he lives? I always find that very useful, uh, where people live. It's on his HR records, so yes. He lives in the same building as Damien. Oh, that's cosy, isn't it? He lives about four floors further down. And his electricity bill is higher. Uh, <laughs> right, so we've got Ty Reed, the friend, who definitely knows where all the bodies are buried. Is <laughs> definitely extremely loyal. Potentially can be tricked or kidnapped and threatened. Want to go down yeah. that road? I like option two. <laughs> <laughs> we have PAs, one or more of which almost certainly will be willing to um, to do... Um, anything that uh, pisses off or um, harms our uh, Mr. Kindler, but probably don't have uh, that much knowledge of any kind of secret underhanded shit, uh, but could potentially have useful information. And we've got Kindler himself, who I think is a bit vain, has acute class consciousness, um, but is probably quite a smart operator. Any other thoughts? Still wondering if we should go to sort of via the PA route, see if we can dig up a bit more mm -hmm. about what he's really like from Tracy. Oh yeah, just get close enough to him that we can get some, get his bank details, get his, you know, just be close to him. 
the best way for you to get close in that way would be being able to get access to the servers in the actual building itself. Mm -hmm. Physical access the, to the, the servers. The bank or the block of flats? The bank. Physical access to the servers in the bank would give you a lot more access to mess with their systems because you wouldn't have to be doing it remotely through a level of remove. Right. Do we want to put that back a bit, though, until we've exhausted other routes? I'd certainly like to investigate a little bit more around it before we just sort of dive in Mission mm -hmm. Impossible style. Um, so we could go into the block of flats where they live and see if we can get cameras into Kindler's house and into Reed's house, mm -hmm. a flat rather. Um, we could try following where their electricity meters are. If it's like indoors under the stairs, that'd be perfect. Yeah. Oh, come to read the meter. Oh, that'll come. Yeah. <laughs> I need a van and some overalls, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love the way you say that, Inna. Yeah, I've done that before. <laughs> um, who wants to take the TA the PA route? Um, I can happily go and have a chat with her. All right. You know the business. I can uh, get what I could say. So, uh, Roy, is it Ray? Ray. Ray, you you reckon you can get um, cameras into their flats? Uh, might need a little bit of hand with the technology, but I can certainly get in. Yeah, I'm happy to help with that. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to need two sets of overalls. Hey. <laughs> I uh, pulled mine out of my bag. <laughs> hey, I like it. Come prepared. <laughs> Quality. So we've got, got cameras. We've got PA. What, do we, what else do we want to try right from the outset? Uh, I don't know much about his computer stuff, but if the head computer guy is living in this flat, would he have some kind of special connection to the business? Might be handy. He's mm. probably going to have airtight tech around his own home. Mm. Yeah. If he's that significant, he's going to have something that's going to need delicately removing. Delicate. Or disabling. Ooh, that's not me. That's going to be you, sweetie. I don't do delicate. I can try. <laughs> I mean, it might be quite hard, though. Yeah. Oh. Well, I Is it worth the risk? It. I'm just wondering if he's if he's that switched on and that much of a homebody, he's going to have some kind of robot. He'll what? have he'll have something around his house that will probably detect the presence of weird shit that he didn't put there. Just a thought. Yeah, it's a possibility. But at the end of the day, if he if he sort of leaves it for a couple of days and then notices it, does it matter? As long as he can't trace it back to us and that's, we've got that's what we need, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Do we know where this money is coming from? Just that it's some of his clients. From some of it, yeah. I mean, you were left with a very vague, it's coming from bad people. Yeah, Mr. Black said bonus points for finding out who. And I mm. like my bonus points. <laughs> so. Certainly be useful to know who we're going to piss off as well. well we don't to know who they are gonna because. We're going to take their money. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very subjective, bad guys. Mm -hmm. We don't agree with it. What if we think they're the right people doing the right thing? Just putting it out there. Not everyone's as bad as their colour. See what happens. Claire, an email pops up on the screen. Oh. Um, Which one? What's uh, That's what a good you... point. You're both on screen. <laughs> <aren't you>? <laughs> <laughs> both of them. Ooh, that's clever. <laughs> What's the subject line? Is it spelt correctly? The subject they line have one. Is the subject line is a picture of a sphinx, which is impressive because I have no idea how you would get that into the subject line. 
Wow. <laughs> it's like a little purple sphinx about that big is the subject line. He spoke Unicode. There this we go. Is from Mr. Black. I'm going to run some antivirus. Yeah. <laughs> before I open it. All is this chat. an ancient PC actually have antivirus on? Yes, it's not that ancient. Did you remember to put a little sticker over the camera? <laughs> post it note. That one. Or a post yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why post its were invented, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Cover up the camera in your laptop. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> so running antivirus seems to show that it's clean. There's no attachments or anything on it. Cool. I'll open it then. It's not got any exe files attached to it. Then, um, nope. Yeah, take a look. Nothing executable. Nothing attached. It is literally a plain text email. And it says, profit and power in ivory towers, shake up the status quo, adjust the paradigm with audacity. Mm. And then it deletes itself. Mm. Oh, someone is going to have to put that in smaller words for me. <laughs> <laughs> Too many people have got too much power too high up. It's making everything go a bit wonky. Fix it. Oh, right. Thank you. <laughs> Does anyone have any vampire friends? Uh, <laughs> possibly. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> oh, I know of. No. I have, I have contacts and allies. Would I have vampires amongst them? Exceedingly unlikely. <laughs> you never know. I've met some weird people in the business. If you did, you probably wouldn't know that they were vampires. Good point. I mean, I hang out with a lot of goths, so <laughs> <laughs> you're a hollow one. Maybe <laughs> lines get a bit blurred, you know. <laughs> so. Do you have the means to contact any, I don't know what the, what the vampire versions of Hollow Ones are, and ask them how they'd get in touch with someone who might be involved with giving this fella money? There must be like a vampire money clan or a vampire important politics clan. Uh, sounds likely. Uh, maybe. Make some calls. Don't know. Scratch my head. What do I think? None of you have actually got the um, vampire contact merit, have you? No. 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 <laughs> or ghoul blood or anything like that. Those would be about the only things that would give you an in with the vampires at this stage. So, no, you probably don't have vampiric contacts. No, uh, very much so. As I say, a lot of people wear black, like me. Uh, but mm, probably no actual vampire wannabes. Yeah, no actual <laughs> pointy teeth. No. I can, I can probably send a spirit out. <laughs> it's a little bit fire and forget, and could have some random results. Why? Why do we want a random vampire? Just wondered if we can. Uh, I'm figuring if there's a load of money coming from a supernatural person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, we think it's probably you. a vampire. Thank you. Like werewolves, just kind of no pockets. Um, <laughs> as I understand it. Okay. Vampires come out at night, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we we did basic induction uh, in the um, uh, in the convention and. Um, uh, hemophages are characterized by extreme aversion to sunlight and um, zero cardiovascular behavior activity, um, low <laughs> temperature. There's a few, few things you can use to identify them. Uh, sorry, again, smaller words? Um, they, no heartbeat. They don't oh, heartbeat. Right. They're, they're room temperature and they don't show up. Um, okay. 
Uh, they're camping uh -huh. up during the day. Okay, so just yeah. you, you, you receive no lot. So the whole the cross so thing, yes or no? Those teams, but uh -huh. that's the basic stuff we come covered in training. So, I mean, he's he's doing business with these people, so he's going to have to meet them at some point, maybe. Um, so we can either track his correspondence, or we can maybe set up some sensors where he goes a lot at night. I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> so, shall we put that one on the back burner then? The question of where. No, I I think we should know where the money's coming from. It's just how. Yeah, but I mean, it might be something that comes on off after we've started bugging, uh, tracking, talking to the PA, all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Right. Is it worth me going straight in and talking to him as a journalist, or is that too big a risk at this stage? We haven't made any ripples yet, so <laughs> he's got no reason to be... Well, he's got all the reason in the world to be suspicious, because he's a money launderer. But <laughs> no more than normal. You know, stroke his ego. If you can butter him up, I see no harm in there. Uh, yes, it kind of depends on top. what sort of story you want to go in with. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Well, at least while you're doing that, we know where he is, so we can mm -hmm. get in his flat. That's a good point. Yeah, great. Um, all, right. all right. Have we got the equipment we need to do a little bit of bugging in the workshop? I'm going to start looking through it. Are there any like, boxes of electronics or anything? Yes, yes, there are. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of basic stuff. electronics. You could probably make better bugs than are available on the market because you're quite a tinkerer, aren't you, Potter? Mm -hmm. I am. Is there any that would help um, program them? Say again? Is there any software on the computers that would help program um, bugs for what we need them to do? Again, you, you two are probably better equipped to design, build, and program yeah. any kind of bugs than most market available stuff would be. I'm sure we can knock a few things together. I'm just gonna start pulling wires out, connecting things up and soldering things together. Lists of code go up the screen. Right. While you do that, <laughs> I'm gonna go get a van. A bit of gaffer tape. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go through, uh, which, are there any papers, any uh, national dailies that he's never been interviewed by or featured in? He doesn't really get featured in the dailies. I mean, he's been mentioned in sort of trade publications, um, little tiny bylines in the Financial Times, but none of the broadsheets or the red tops have ever really done a story on him. The only time he's ever appeared in one of those is in a picture with someone more famous. Uh, has, he, has his company announced anything particularly important recently? No, nothing particularly special. Okay. Uh, finance and real estate it doesn't make for gripping headline news unfortunately they've been what's the market looking like at the moment have, has there been like a housing boom or a housing slump or puts the up or puts it down it's the london housing market it always seems to go up and up and up there's a lot of um to do at the minute about the sheer number of landlords and the number of people that can't afford to buy in London because all of the properties are owned and the values are going up. Okay, and there's already um, shown up in a Financial Times story. Yeah. How about one of the um, glossy magazines? Yeah. A little sort of showpiece on, you know, rags to riches kind of thing. That always... Uh, that always piques their interest. Fits his narrative. We done good. All right. Uh, yes, some kind of uh, city mag. Um, see if we can get a spoofed email account. And uh, send an email. Where would you like it? What? Where would you like it? <laughs> um, yeah, these guys are going to need to set you up a background and an ID and be on hand to do background check stuff. Yeah. Well, um, should we just make up the name of the magazine? C City Trader, that's one of them, isn't it? Yeah. 
Right, City Trader magazine. It's going to be an email address and a fake background. Mm. Um, and I'll ping an email to his current PA um, asking if he'd like to be interviewed for a feature on, like, the, the, the hook is house, the London housing market is uh, booming as much as ever. And he's one of the, the up and coming new uh, real estate investors. Um, uh, thriving in the current market, uh, a, an unlikely uh, underdog rags to riches story, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Um, um, we'd like to arrange to meet for a coffee like somewhere on Fleet Street um, tomorrow. Do you need a couple of days? Right, Claire D, do you want to set him up a background? Tomorrow's good. Yeah. No That's problem. an intelligence and computers to, to build him a convincing background that he can use to make this a thing. That's at least four. So you've got a convincing background set up. Uh, and you're emailing the PA or calling? Uh, e emailing, and are we saying tomorrow or the day after? Do you, uh, Ray and Sweet Pea, do you need time to get your kit together? Tomorrow's fine. Uh, tomorrow's fine. Call it tomorrow then. Um, lunch. My, my, uh, uh, lunch on me. Great, let's get some lunch. Oh, <laughs> I, mean, <him. laughs> oh, I thought you oh. meant you were going to give me lunch. Oh, oh, nobody's yeah. been shopping yet i'm hungry <laughs> well we've got the wad of money that uh, mr black gave us so um and ray's about to go out and get a van i've got to go get a van <laughs> i've got a shopping list what else do we need all right well I've, i'm i'm on, uh, on hold until tomorrow then unless the evening all right. uh the block of flats you computer whizzy people can, <laughs> can we find out who generally services it can we just get a little bit more yeah, we can find out who their service company. providers are. Um, if yeah. we want to get inside and yeah. get near the meters. Just so we front up with the right name. You know, it helps. Yeah. There's always sort of inspectors as well. You wouldn't have to necessarily do electric meters. We should probably check whether or not the uh, meters have been uh, looked at recently. Yeah. Yes. Check where the meters are. There might be smart meters or something. So, uh, And it if is. they're not actually in the flat, so sometimes they're outside. Fire marshal, safety inspector, something like that. Oh, what about sprinkler systems? Yeah. There's always got to be one that one of those inside the flat. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be fire testers. Okay, so Auden, what do you want to do first? Um well either go and steal a van or blag a van. <laughs> okay which is <laughs> less risky what sort of van are you looking to get slash blag uh looking for a basic utility white panel van okay it's plenty like of those around hundreds of but no one will look at twice yeah um so that sweet Pea and i can rock up in our overalls with hastily printed out and patched on emblems for whichever fire safety testing firm we decide we're from okay um, and then I think I need to get some coffee and some proper milk and some iced tea and a couple of other <laughs> stuff that people want that makes life livable. And some sandwiches. And some sandwiches, you know, proper nice gingham thermos, all the proper stuff, you know. All right, then. So how do you want to go about getting this van? Uh, well, I think I prefer to blag it. We're still in the East End, effectively. So yeah, I'm on my home turf. I should know someone who either I can just borrow their van for just a day. Ah, I see you have the background influence. Yes, that's what I was going to be banking okay. on. If you could make a roll on your influence, mm. and since it is your local manor, we'll yes. see how that goes. <laughs> uh, so my... my so it's only two dice. Yep. But we'll see how we go. Uh, what am I typing again? Uh, forward slash roll 2d10. Yep. All right. Mm. Wish me luck. Rolling the dice. There you go. Oh. Oh, one. 
You do know a man, as luck would have it. Excellent. You know a chap called Terry, and um, Terry does a lot of home decorating stuff, and he's got a van, but he's laid up at the minute with a bad back. Oh, poor Terry. Um, so, you know, he's a little bit concerned about making ends meet, and you know, if you bung him a ton, he don't yeah. mind if you want to borrow the van. Oh, I'll peel off some money off our working capital. Go see Terry. Can I walk to Terry's? How far away is Terry? Yeah, you could walk. Yeah, it's a half hour, 40 minute walk there. Fair enough. Hour if you're picking up the shopping. Uh, I'm going to pick up the shop. I'll get the van first. I'll do the shopping. All right. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can go around to Terry's and pick up a plain white van. It's oh. got some painting and decorating stuff in the back. Rollers, canvases. It's all right. No one's going to look. As long as it doesn't say Terry's painting services along the side, we'll be all right. No, he, he can't afford to get that sort of <laughs> level of advertising done. All right. I'll stay, have a bit of a chat, you know, a cup of tea. Give me his hundred. Yeah. Well, he chucks you the keys. Two off the van. Pop in the local Tesco. Do some shopping. Pick up your bits and pieces. Yeah. All right. Uh, meanwhile, while he's doing that, Cleddy, mm -hmm. what do you want to do? Um, I was thinking I'd probably have a little bit of a look on the background of the PA that we've got. Yeah, we've got our eye on. The XPA or the current PA? The XPA. Okay, the XPA. Um, basically, sort of wanted to know a little bit more about the any HR issues she may have had while she was at the company. Um, basically, any any way I can sort of approach her as a a potential recruit wanting advice on applying for similar jobs. Okay, so Is there any she... way I could sort of network with her. She's currently working at KPMG. Nice. So you can get in touch with her through LinkedIn. Are you going to create an identity for yourself to do this as well? Or are you going to yes. use your actual one? Uh, no, I will create a new one. It'll probably be quite similar to the one I've already got, but um, not identical, obviously. Further down the food chain. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so what sort of message, how do you want to get in touch with her? What sort of message are you trying to send? Um, oh, I see you used to work at um, Kindler Holdings Limited. Um, I was wondering if I would could have a quick chat with you because um, I'm looking to apply for a job there and I want all the chances I can get. Would you mind giving me a hand? One PA to another. She emails you back saying... Um, I wouldn't bother if I was you, love. There are better jobs out there. It's not worth it. It's a boys' club. Lots of grief. Management are really sexist. You're better off going to a better, more widely known firm with better human resources. Very damning. <laughs> And that, that's what you get back from her. Okay. Tempted to follow up. I don't want to press too hard. Uh, Claire P, are you making? I am ordering some decals that say A AIG UK for the van okay. and some embroidered patches and things like that on like Amazon Prime through a alias account. Okay. And are you making some bugs? Yep, I'm making some bugs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, make an intelligence and technology role then to make your bugs. Okay. Oh, not the best role tonight. <laughs> it's not the worst either, though. I mean, you no. managed to you managed to put together three little micro bugs. Cool. working with the tools that you've got they're 
small, discreet, no bigger than a button, and you can get audio and video from them. Woohoo! And do you want them to be recording or transmitting? Transmitting are easier to detect. Yeah. Recording means you need to actually go and physically pick need them to go up. Pick them up, yeah. Let's have them recording. Yeah. Yeah. Okie dokie. So you've got three little recordy bugs and a set of decals for the van. Cool. Can't wait to see the van. You've had a chat with the PA. Uh, Dave, you get an email back saying mm -hmm. that Damien Kindler is not available for lunch, but that he is interested in doing a story with you and you're welcome to meet him at the... I'm trying to think of a non-offensive, non-copywritten name for a strip club right now. <laughs> Peppermint Elephant was the one you had earlier. <laughs> Peppermint Elephant, there you go, yeah. There you go. You're, you're welcome to join them at the Peppermint Elephant <laughs> for a few drinks that evening. Okay. Um... Instead. For some reason, I'm picturing this elephant as being very pink and covered in rhinestones. Yeah. Um, I guess <laughs> this evening isn't... Not this evening, this evening, sorry. The, the oh, evening sorry. of tomorrow, when, which was the day you booked for. Um, I, I'll reply with a kind of faintly shocked, uh, gosh, uh, <laughs> not how I normally do these kinds of things, but yes, I'll meet you there. Moving you out of your comfort zone. <laughs> into his <laughs> well moving Jeremy Hargraves uh, journalist uh, out of his comfort zone exactly Jeremy Hargraves is very professional <laughs> okay so a little while later you meet back up back at the back at the barn as it were you've got your shopping and your bugs and your decals are due to arrive tomorrow You've mixed up your tech. You've had your correspondences. Where do we go from here? I attempted to contact the current PA as well with exactly the same set of questions. See if I get a similar answer. Okay. You going to do that? Yeah, why not? It's just firing off an email. It's not like you have to roll for it. So you fire off an email to the current PA and she emails you back later on in the afternoon. So after you've had lunch and got back with everybody and had your conversations and stuff, she emails you back a little bit later saying, it's a really steep learning curve. Um, you've got to be very adaptable. You've got to think on the fly. Um, very, very confidential businesses. So you've got to have a good level of discretion. Um, you need to be able to take banter. It's a bit of an old boys network. And they can be quite laddish at times. She's sounding a little bit more kindly disposed towards them than the other one. Well, she's only been in the job for three months. Mm. <laughs> Not jaded hit. yet. Hasn't quite hit the me too point yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there you go. You've got a uh, little bit of feedback on the man himself, what he's like. Right. Um, we've got time until all this kicks off tomorrow. I'm going to, I'm not going to do it inside here because I've got this weird sterile zone. Mm, I don't like it in here. Oh, uh, <laughs> the, you keep talking about sterile zone and spirits and stuff. Uh, yeah. That's not really my bag. Is there something that the Sphinx boys have done that makes this place special? Can we pick that out? Imagine it's, are the symbols visible in mundane space? No, they're not. There's symbols in the ceiling that you can't see, uh, which are probably um, some kind of extended uh, 
hermetic rite to, to it seems to just be sort of driving spirits away rather than being like a hard barrier but wow. isn't that a good thing though no one to look on us yeah sure but it's uh, not suitable for what i'm about to do there's okay. no friends here either yeah yeah <laughs> uh, uh, friends is interesting not really yeah, my well, bag but just wondering could we put the same symbols on the motor Ah. We'd have to. I mean, no. Um, <laughs> I'm. I'm not okay with that. No. <laughs> well, just, just putting it out there. It's all right. It might upset it's her. Right. Him. You're, it. Um, you're, you're a mage as well. It's not the symbol, yeah. the will, and the the, the power. Um, I need the whole ritual. I got it. Yeah. All right. It's quite a powerful effect. I think it's probably beyond what uh, what we could do. Um, no, is it Ben? Is it like a thickened gauntlet effect? No, it's not. Not that. Um, it works kind of like a spirit version of the, that mosquito device that's illegal. Okay, like <laughs> a, a spirit two, spirit three effect kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, you could do something okay. similar. It's basically a, a low grade annoying thing that spirits detect and go away from because it's annoying. So yeah, like putting, a, one, putting one of those on the car is going to make the spirit the car's own spirit piss off and it's that's that's that mean right. and you, you guys can kind of hear it when you when you're looking into the other side so uh, when you've got your spirit senses off you're like yeah, it's fine but as soon as you kick spirit senses on you get the kind of really <laughs> annoying sound <laughs> just at the edge of hearing <laughs> Like walking through St Albans Station late at night, we're like, ah, yeah. Uh, so it, it's not like a major banishment rote or anything. If the spirits genuinely wanted to, they could still come here. Yeah, but they but generally don't I, want to because it's um, less than comfortable. I need a can of spray paint and a bottle of rum. And what do we need for the ritual? <laughs> <laughs> I've just been shopping. <laughs> I was not on the list. I'm pretty sure I can get a bottle of rum and a can of spray paint without going very far from, from here. Really. I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> true as well. It's a, it's a corner shop just down the way. You'll be fine. Yeah. The kind of area we're talking about, you, you can't spit outside without hitting an off license or a pub, really, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll head down to the local corner shop, um, pull off some. Uh, petty grift involving a faked um, scratch card and use it to pay for a bottle of rum and uh, um, uh, a couple of cans of uh, car paint. Go on then, do us a manipulation and subterfuge roll. Um, oh my lad. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, it's almost insultingly easy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at nice. one point you're briefly worried when you realise that the date is quite clearly printed on the scratch card and it's not in date in the slightest, but the guy behind the counter is so bamboozled with your fast talk and your patter that in fairly short order you're leaving with two different colours of spray paint and a 70 centiliter bottle of rum <laughs> I'll bimble back right did you get Kraken or rock gut I think it's uh, octopus <laughs> <laughs> generic octopus rum <laughs> mm, nom, nom, nom. there's nothing quite like off-brand knockoffs. <laughs> ingredients. Is it got like a translation label stuck over the top of it? Because it's actually come from somewhere else, not <laughs> we're knockoff duty free. <laughs> right. Um, uh, where's the lockup? Is it like a, under a rail bridge or something? Or no, it's a row of garages at the ground floor level of a block of flats only they're disused garages because no one around here has got a car or could afford to run one in london mm. so uh, empty parking lot um disused children's playground what yeah kind? there's uh there's the bins 
around the back of the garages. Okay. That's probably the most private place. It smells, but... Uh, well, I'm going to go and spray like a massive spider web. Um, and then I'm going to pour a whole bottle of rum out on the spider web. Uh, and I'm going to uh, sing and dance and call out to um, Anansi and uh, ask him to send a... Um, a, a, a gaffling, a sort of minor spirit. Um, I'm peeking because I'm curious. Do a service for me. Uh, Okie dokie, do your arate roll. Yeah, summoning's level three, isn't it? Yes. Um, this is clearly blatant. Yes. <laughs> it um, doesn't get much more blatant. Uh, hopefully no no um sleeping witnesses. So there are no witnesses, no. Um I'm gonna blow a point of contestants to bring the difficulty down to six. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't need to, never mind. Oh, very nice. Two successes. Mm -hmm. And Nancy hears your prayer and is reasonably impressed. And a little brown spider lands on your shoulder, almost invisible against your suit. Uh, well, thank, thank you for coming, uh, Brother Spider. Um, I need you to go to uh, this address and uh, to take a look all around the building and to look for wicked spirits to look for spirits that have been set to watch the building, uh, to look for traps that have been set in the world of the spirit. Um, come back without being seen or without tripping anything yourself. Uh, come back and tell me what there is, and I will pay you. But what, what would you ask for this service? Tiny little gaffling, not really thinking about the future. Mm, no, you can have this one because it gets an outing. Okay, well, thank, thank you for that. So it waves its little front legs at you and then jumps off and spins a web down to the ground and scuttles away into the shadows where presumably it heads off back into the Umbra and goes off on a little wander. Okay, is there anything anybody else would like to do at this stage? Because I think that's probably a good point to wrap up. Otherwise, unless there's anything that you particularly need to get done in the here and now. I want to drink some tea, some good iced choice. tea. <laughs> You have now got a bottle of little peach iced tea. He did yes. remember. Yes. <laughs> full list. Right. Uh, I wonder if I need to be tooled up. Maybe not yet. Oh, uh, what you mean? With like an iron? Yeah. Like an iron. Like a quiet, whispering iron. Like a tire iron. <laughs> Hoping there's one of them in the back of the car. I'm going to have a look at the car. I haven't had a proper look at a motor yet. <laughs> it's about six years old. Um, very nondescript, very plain, very well maintained. It's got a toolkit, spare tyre. Tyre iron. In the back, tyre iron. It's got everything that you would need to keep it running under normal circumstances. It hasn't got snow chains. No, hopefully will not be necessary. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, not super necessary. Pop the hood, look at the engine. Uh, very well maintained. Uh, mileage is decent. It's probably done 60, 70,000 miles. But it's been very well looked after in that time. No. MOT is up to date. Tax and insurance is up to date. No. Good. Can I say hi to it and just sort of introduce us in a very gentle sort of way? It doesn't appear to have an awakened spirit. Hmm, you are talking to the car. 
well, and you could go through it's 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 not <laughs> it's not been loved or cherished or had lots of time and attention devoted to it it's very much a neutral piece of equipment for something like a car to develop an awakened spirit it either needs a spirit mage to go up to it and be like oi wake up or it needs <laughs> many many years of loving care and attention and sort of almost worship for the spirit of the car to wake up so this is a sleepy car well, in, in absence of a spirit mage, I shall pat its bumper fondly and, and um, <laughs> bimble on my way and have a cup of tea. <laughs> there we go. So preparation work is done. You're tooled up and ready to go. On the next day, you've got an interview. You've got your decals. You've got a flap to bug. And that will be our next session next week. Hey. Okay, oh, so thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, everybody, for playing so nicely. We got into the characters really, really well. I mean, hey. everybody seemed to just sort of feel the characters really well. I'm really, really chuffed with that. Um, yep, join us next week on Garblag Games' Mage 20th Anniversary Ascension Heist, where we go to find out a little bit more about Damien Kindler and his IT guy, Ty Reed, and maybe what go is going on with him and his money thank you very much and good night thank you good night bye